On April 30th, 2014, astronauts aboard the International Space Station finished installing high-definition cameras pointing down at planet Earth. The project's known as a high-definition Earth viewing experiment, and shortly after becoming operational, NASA began streaming in real time these pictures down to Earth through the internet for anyone to see. These are some of the most amazing videos that I've ever seen of the planet, and it's kind of crazy to think that everything we care about for the entire human race depends on this relatively small blue planet. The Earth is our home, and all the things we care about, like our families, our culture, our history, our technology, our knowledge, they're all intimately related to the history of this planet. But how exactly do we study the Earth? The branch of science dedicated to understanding the planet is called geology, and it's the study of the Earth's physical structure, its history, and the processes that act on it. Geologists are scientists that are trying to learn about the history of the Earth through studying the rocks that make it up, and understand the changes that the planet is undergoing. Since the surface of the Earth is constantly changing through time, learning about how rocks change can allow scientists to better understand our home. So let's start with the basics. Every rock on the planet will fall into one of three categories, that is sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. And it's these three rock types that make up something called the rock cycle. That's just a process that by which new rocks are formed and old rocks are broken down on Earth. But for this video, I'm only going to focus on igneous rocks because we can actually watch their formation in real time, and understanding their formation will give us a good foundation in geology. The word igneous is derived from the Latin word ignis, meaning fire. That's because igneous rocks begin their lives as molten rock, or lava, below the surface. And given enough time, that lava can be brought to the surface of the earth by way of volcanoes like these ones. Now, keep in mind that isn't the only way igneous rocks can form, but it is the easiest for us to see and conceptualize. There are over 1,500 active volcanoes on the earth today, and many more ancient inactive volcanoes. Igneous rocks are constantly being recycled and formed in the rock cycle, and this has been going on since the beginning of Earth's history. We kind of think of the planet as a static place in terms of a human life. It appears that way to us, but actually the Earth is really dynamic, and by observing igneous rocks, we can see how dynamic the planet is. So it seems pretty straightforward how rocks form. Molten lava comes out of a volcano, cools to form new rocks. But there's actually a lot more going on below the surface than we realize. The Earth is divided up in three major parts. That is a crust where we live, and build our homes for example. The mantle, where rocks get heated and pressurized and turned into something a little bit more like silly putty, a plastic. And the core. And it's these three parts that interact that cause the Earth to have a rock cycle. It's because of this rock cycle that rocks aren't used up. They're recycled through the planet. And geology is trying to understand all these processes that are controlling the rock cycle, the Earth, the changes that's undergone, its history. The rock cycle exists because the Earth has three dynamic parts, the crust, the mantle, and the core. You can see them here in this diagram. And because of the interaction of these three parts, igneous rocks can be formed from volcanic eruptions. One place to see this happen in real time is on the Big Island of Hawaii. This lava flowing out of a volcano cools to form brand new igneous rocks. The igneous rocks in this picture are called basalt, and that's because they're rich in elements like magnesium and iron. It gives them that dark color. Basalt's a really common kind of rock. You can find it all over the world, just like these stones in the rock wall behind me. They're the same kind of rock as the lava flow we saw in Hawaii but there's no active volcanoes in Arizona, so how did they get here? Well, these pieces of basalt are millions of years old. They came out of an ancient volcano, an eruption just like what we saw in Hawaii. And one thing we can begin to understand when we learn about geology is that the Earth is really old. 
And it's kind of amazing to think that these rocks have survived for millions of years. And the rocks that we're farming new in Hawaii will be around for millions of years. It's all about the rock cycle. So I'm standing here on a large piece of granite in the Santa Catalina Mountains in southern Arizona. And granite is a different kind of igneous rock than basalt. Granite takes a long time to cool, and so the crystals are larger. Unlike basalt, like the lava we saw in Hawaii, which cooled rapidly, the crystals are very fine and small, and you can't see them very well with your eye. Granite, on the other hand, takes a long time to cool, and so the crystals become much larger. That's the textural difference between this rock and the basalt. Being curious about the world around us is the heart of geology. It's about understanding the planet that we live on and what makes it up. In this video, we learned the basics of geology, the three rock types in the rock cycle, how igneous rocks are formed, the three parts of the earth, some of the differences between two types of igneous rocks, basalt and granite. In the next video, we'll learn about sedimentary rocks. If you have any questions about igneous rocks, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and stay curious about the natural world.